Intercepts and symmetry. The majority of this lesson is gonna be about symmetry. However, there's a couple of topics I might not have addressed as directly as I wanted to in other lessons. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the beginning of this lesson. To evaluate a function means finding out the output for an input. Given a function f, such as the function shown here, x squared plus x minus six, the notation f with that little two in parentheses is read as f of two, and it's an instruction. It's an instruction to replace the x of the expression with twos and then to simplify or just evaluate what it turns out to be. All right, so let's do a little bit of practice with this. This is a graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared plus x minus six. Okay, so as we evaluate it, we should be able to see those outputs for those given inputs. Okay, so here's an instruction. Let's take the function's expression, which is this, and plug a two in wherever we see an x. As a suggestion, which might sound a little bit silly at first, a way that you can do this would be to write the expression, but wherever you have an x to create a set of parentheses. Okay, so it would look like this. I'd have parentheses for that x, which are gonna get square. So the parentheses replace the x. Plus parentheses, minus six. That then gives me a place to substitute the two in. Okay, now in this example, in this example, you could probably do the whole problem without any parentheses and it seems a little bit silly, but in the next, I think it's gonna justify some things for you here. Okay, so we do have two squared, which is gonna be four, plus two is gonna give you six, six minus six is gonna give you zero. So in a way you can think of this as identifying a coordinate on the graph. You have an input of a two, the output is gonna be a zero. That would be located here. All right, suppose we plug in a negative two. Okay, so again, I'm gonna use the parentheses. And right here, I think it's important that we see them. Right in that spot there. Here, maybe a little bit, not so much. I think we can figure out what's going on there. But this is important. It's important that we understand that the x is getting squared. So it's not that the two is getting squared, it's that the negative two is getting squared. Okay, so negative two times negative two is gonna create a positive four. So we have a positive four, we're going to subtract two, so four minus two is two, okay, and then two minus six is gonna give us negative four. Okay, now there is a difference, and I wanna make the point here that if you attempted to type this in the calculator, but you did not have the parentheses there, a calculator will evaluate this as a negative four here, which of course will change the whole answer at the end. Okay, but the answer is negative four, which we can see here, we go over negative two and we do have to go down to negative four. All right, and last, f of zero. If we plug in a zero for all the x's, that term is a zero, that term is a zero, that is a negative six, which would give you negative six in the end. Oh, and for color coding, let's make those blue. Okay, now that point at zero for x zero right here, you would go down six units and you end up with that spot. All right, the next part I'm gonna talk about are intercepts. We have x-intercepts and we have y-intercepts. This is an example of an x-intercept because it's crossing the x-axis at that location. You do have another x-intercept that we didn't evaluate for, but it would be over at negative three. And if you want to, you can plug negative three in for the x's and see that you do end up with zero. We also have a y-intercept, which is where we cross the y-axis and that would have been right there. Okay, when you plug in a zero, you can actually identify where the y-intercept is. All right, so as described above in the graph, a value of y where the graph contacts the y-axis is called a y-intercept. It can be found algebraically by evaluating f of x for zero, which is what we did in the above part. If you just plug in a zero for these x's, okay, just plug those in there, you get back negative six. And we saw that the graph contacted there. And if we do have a function, something that is defined as a function for every input, there's a unique output, you get one y-intercept. You can't have multiple y-intercepts, otherwise it would fail the vertical line test. 
Okay, so this is a procedure, plugging in zeros, is a procedure that you could use to identify the y-intercept anytime. All right, so for any value of x where the graph contacts the x-axis, that would be called an x-intercept. These can found algebraically by setting f of x equal to zero. When you're at the x-axis, the output, the y-value is a zero. So to solve for those, and you would actually have to solve, you can't evaluate for these. To solve for them, you would take the expression that you have and you would set it equal to zero. Then depending on the type of an expression that you have, there's different techniques you could use. In this case, what we would end up doing is factoring. We can think of two values that multiply to give us negative six, but also add up to give us a positive one. Those would be positive three and negative two. So this factors to x plus three times x minus two. And the values that would make this equal to zero would either be a two, that would give you a zero here, making the whole thing zero, or here at negative three, that would make the whole thing zero as well. And if you go back to the graph, you'll see that those are the x-intercepts. All right, so the main thing that I wanted to talk about here was symmetry. A graph has symmetry if it looks the same when viewed in more than one way. Okay, there's different types of symmetry that we're gonna look at. We're gonna begin with the most classic case, which would be symmetry with a line of symmetry. Okay, something that you could fold in half and it matches up, which I think you can easily identify in that graph there that it has symmetry. And the line of symmetry would be located right here, which would be along the y-axis. Okay, so there's different types of symmetry and we're gonna start with one that looks like this. There are different ways that you can identify symmetry when we're thinking about functions. We can see them in the graphs, which I just identified in that one. We can see them in tables, and you can sometimes see it algebraically. That would mean looking at the expression for the function. Okay, so the graph that we're looking at here is actually f of x is equal to x squared. It is the basic quadratic parent function that we have here. Okay, now in the graph, you can see the symmetry around the y-axis. Okay, in the table of values, if I started to evaluate this function for different x's, you're gonna see symmetry in the table as well. You're gonna notice in the table that I've got all the way from negative three to three, okay? And then I've got all the opposite values that are in between those, negative two and two, you get negative one and one, and then there's zero in the middle. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate the function for all these numbers. If I take negative three and plug it into the expression, I have to multiply negative three by itself. Okay, negative three times negative three is gonna cancel out the negative, giving us a nine. Negative two plugged in, negative two times negative two is gonna give you a positive four. Again, the negative is gonna cancel. You're gonna get four. Okay, and then negative one plugged in, negative one times negative one is gonna give you a positive one. That we can actually see right here. The graph isn't quite big enough to see the other numbers, but I can definitely show you that one. Just above around here is going to be the negative 2 and 4. Okay, now 0, 0 squared is going to give you 0, which is right there. The rest of these are pretty straightforward. You get 1, you get 4, you get 9. Everything's positive. Okay, so you get that point that matches up to the other one, that sense of reflection or symmetry. You're going to notice in the table that you have symmetry starting at 0, Around that, you've got one and one, you've got four and four, then you've got nine and nine, okay? You sorta of have symmetry here, but it's not exactly true because these values are opposites, right? Negative three is not really the same thing as three. But in the output part, those are absolutely reflections of each other. So you can see it in the table there. All right, so this is a unique case of symmetry that we refer to as even. We're gonna call this an even function. Because what happens in this function is that you're able to plug in the opposite of an input and the result is the same. I can plug negative three in and I can plug three in and I get the same result. Okay, so you could imagine a quadratic function that looks like this just move to a different location. But if we were to move it left or right, if we were to move this function left or right, it would not hold that property. You would not get the same value for opposite inputs. Okay, so an even function is gonna be symmetric left and right, but it's gonna be symmetric around the y-axis. 
All right, now algebraically, how we could prove a function would be even is you could take the opposite of your input, which is just negative x, and you can plug it in and see if it turns out to be the same as the original function. Okay, so our original function is f of x is equal to x squared. And if I were to plug in negative x, the opposite of my input, we would have negative x squared, which is the same thing as negative x times negative x. The negatives will become positive, and we get back x squared. And what that really tells us is that no matter what number you plug in here, okay, whether you plug in a 10 or a negative 10, the result is going to be the same thing, in that case, 100. All right, there are tons of graphs that do have a line of symmetry. Here's an example of a graph that has a line of symmetry at the x-axis. Okay, you have a line of symmetry here. And by the way, this is not a function, right? It would not pass the vertical line test. But as a graph, it does have a line of symmetry at the x-axis. And we can also see that symmetry within a table of values. In this case, the graph that we're looking at, in a sense, is the opposite of what we had seen in example two. This is gonna be y squared is equal to x. Again, not a function. It doesn't say y equals. It doesn't say f of x equals. This is not a function. It is a relationship between the x's and the y's, but it does build symmetry. We can see it here around the x-axis. In the table, everything that we're gonna write here is gonna be the opposite of what we saw in example two. Okay, so we'd be taking our y values, we would square those to get the x's. Okay, so we'd get a nine, a four, one, you get zero, one, four, and a nine and the symmetry in the table exists here, so you're able to see it there. There really isn't anything interesting that we can show with this algebraically. However, it is noteworthy to say that for every coordinate, x, y, that would be part of the graph, you are also gonna have x negative y. Okay, as an example, let's take a look at the table. Suppose we took this coordinate, four, negative two. If you have that as a coordinate, then you will also have four and the opposite of that number, which is right here, you get four and two. Now that's something that's very particular to this graph and this relationship because we have a line of symmetry at the x-axis. In example two, you were shown an example of a function that was referred to as being even, okay? In example four, we're gonna look at a function that is referred to as being odd. This is what we call an odd function. An odd function is not gonna have a line of symmetry, but it is going to have a point of symmetry. That point of symmetry will have to be located at the origin. It's gonna be there. Okay, now the graph does not actually need to go through the origin. Okay, that won't be true for all the odd functions that you'll see later on, but the point of symmetry will still be located at the origin. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens in the table with this. This function that we're looking at is gonna be f of x is equal to x to the third power. I hope that you pick out here that the exponent that we have is actually an odd number because that does play into this. So let's go ahead and evaluate these numbers in that function. If we take negative three and we cube it, if we take negative three and cube it, you're gonna multiply three by itself three times, which is gonna give you 27. But if you count up the negatives that you have, you've got three of them because you're raising it to the third power. So two of those negatives are gonna cancel out as a positive but then you keep that third one. So this is gonna be a negative 27. Okay, and then the same thing is gonna happen with the negatives in these numbers. You're gonna end up keeping those. You're gonna keep a negative here. Two to the third power is gonna be eight. Okay, and then one to the third power is gonna give you one, but you're gonna maintain that negative because two of them cancel. You have to keep the third one. Okay, zero to the third power, zero. These should be pretty straightforward then. You just get one, you get eight, you get 27. Okay, so in this table, you don't have that symmetry here in the outputs. You don't have the exact same values, but what you actually have are opposite values of each other. And that's what it says here. When you plug in the opposite of a number, the output that you're gonna get, the answer that you're gonna get is gonna be the opposite of the function evaluated for the original number. For example, if I were to plug in two into this function, 
I get eight. If I plug in a two, I get an eight. But if I were to plug in the opposite of two, plug in negative two, the answer that I get is gonna be negative eight, which is what we see there. All right, so algebraically, let's go ahead and demonstrate it with this function. Okay, so the original function, f of x is gonna be equal to x cubed. We're going to evaluate for negative x. Okay, so we get negative x to the third power, which is the same thing as negative x times negative x times negative x. These two negatives will become positive, but you're gonna to have to keep the third one. So we keep a negative, then you have x times x times x, which is x cubed. So by plugging in a negative x, you get the opposite of what you had for the original function. You get negative x cubed. All right, but how do we see it in the graph? If you have a point of symmetry in the graph, then that point will always be the midpoint between two other points on the graph. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just take a straight edge here and let's match it up with that spot. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna take a straight edge here and I'm gonna draw a line. And we're gonna notice if we follow that line out We'll actually stop it right here, but I could do this pretty much in any spot along. I can pretty much do this anywhere as long as I'm going through that point, okay? But I'm gonna create actually just a segment here. And this point is gonna be the midpoint between that point and that point. All right, so as another example, I can draw a segment here. Let's suppose I'm picking out that point that's what I'm really doing. And if I connect that to the point of symmetry, you'll see that it matches up with that point over there. All right, for example five, what we're gonna do is look at three different functions and we're gonna decide if these are odd, even, or neither. Generally speaking, most functions are gonna be neither. To be odd, you have to have a point of symmetry at the origin. To be even, you have to have a line of symmetry along the y-axis. Okay, to do this, we're gonna start by looking at a graph of each of the functions to see if it actually may have that point of symmetry or that line of symmetry. All right, for the first f of x, we're gonna graph x squared minus three. All right, so we get that parabolic shape. This is a quadratic type function. It looks a lot like the function that we saw in example two, except that it's been translated down three units. So it does appear to have a line of symmetry at the y-axis, which would mean that this is an even function. Okay, so we believe it to be even, and it is gonna be even. Okay, now algebraically to test it out, what we wanna be able to see is that if we plug in negative x, we get this back. All right, so let's plug it in. We got negative x to the second power, again, using those parentheses, minus three. Okay, and as we simplify, the negative three or the minus three just stays as it is. That negative is gonna cancel when it gets squared. So it's gonna bring you back to x squared, which is the same thing that we had here. So this is in fact an even function. All right, for our second f of x function, we also have a quadratic. This is gonna be a parabola, but let's see what it looks like graphed. Okay, so there's that parabolic shape that quadratic type function, it does have a line of symmetry, which appears to be maybe around one, might be around one, but it is not at the y-axis, okay? If the line of symmetry is not along the y-axis, then this is not gonna be an even function. This will also not be an odd function. That does not have a point of symmetry at the origin, okay? So this will be neither. Our third f of x, we probably can't imagine what that's gonna look like, okay? Being that we have x's in the denominator, it's most likely gonna have an asymptote in there, at least one of them uh, might have a hole in the graph. We'll just have to see. So let's go ahead and just graph it. All right, so we do get a couple of vertical asymptotes and you even get something that is called a slant asymptote. There's a diagonal looking line that would represent an asymptote there as well. Those are kind of interesting. 
All right, but is this even or is it odd? Definitely not even because you don't have the symmetry over the y-axis. However, you can see in the middle part there, it looks a lot like that x cubed function. And I guess that kind of explains some of it there. It looks a little bit like that x cubed function, and that was odd. And if you look at these parts over here, they're not horizontal reflections of each other. They're kind of like diagonal with each other. Okay, so this actually does take on the characteristic of an odd function with a point of symmetry at the origin. This peak sort of area here can match up to that peak area over there. And it extends out in that direction and it also extends out in that direction. So a really weird looking version of this, but it is gonna be an odd function. This is gonna be odd. All right, now let's demonstrate algebraically that that's true. Let's take f of x and plug in negative x. Okay, so for the top, we get negative x cubed. For the bottom, we're gonna get four minus, you got negative x squared. All right, for the top, when this gets cubed, we already saw that one previously, you're just gonna get back negative x cubed. Okay, two of the negatives will cancel, becoming positive, but you're gonna have to keep that third one, so there it is. On the bottom, the negative here is gonna cancel when it gets squared, okay? So that's gonna take care of itself, and you're still gonna have that one. So these don't cancel together. You're still gonna get four minus x squared. So the bottom looks identical, almost like it would be an even function, okay? But you do have that negative on the top. All right, so we need to show that this is the opposite of that. And to do that, well, we factor out that negative. That's all you gotta do. You can take that negative out front, okay, divide the negative out, factor it out, you get x cubed over four minus x squared, and this is the original function, but you've got that negative in front of it. So we did end up with the opposite of f of x, and that's what makes it odd. Wait, there